Hello there folks, I'm Dan Brown from a sort of interesting life.com. You're joining me on board good old narrowboat Tilly and today we're going to talk about the winter mooring rules and what on earth they are now, what they used to be, how they've changed and what the impact of that is. Before we go any further I want to just say that as always with these videos I only ever talk from my own experience and this is a topic that there's been a huge amount of debate over with all sorts of opinions of all sorts of strengths in every direction. So really I want this video to be nice and neutral, just give you the information and the facts so that you can make your own mind up and also I hope that by looking at what the rules used to be and how they've changed it can help put into context some perspective of why some people have certain views and why they hold them so strongly. Now this is something that I've spoken to a lot of people about and other people like me who have previously had winter moorings and then not been able to this year and it's quite an interesting topic with quite a lot of, um, well we won't get into that, like I say just want to give you the simple facts in this video. So let's go all the way back into the depths of time to 2012, wow that's a long time ago, um, but basically 2012 was when I bought Narrowboat Tilly. And I bought Tilly intending to be a continuous cruiser, which basically means that I can't stop in more than I can't stop in one place for more than 14 days before then moving on to another place and then another place after that. But basically there was the winter mooring scheme which allows you to pay a fee and be able to stop in certain places for longer than the 14 days. And that winter mooring period lasts from the start of, back in 2012 when I bought Tilly, it lasted from the start of November through to the end of March. So it was a five month period and you could pay for one month, you could pay for two months, you could pay for the full five months. And how it worked back then, you had that five month period and you had a huge list of locations that you could choose and say, right, I'm going to moor up here and you'd pay your fee and then turn up and that would be that. So that was absolutely lovely and it worked out particularly well for me because two of the places that you could pay for winter mooring were two of the most commonly frequently walked and cycled stretches of canal that I had done and those were Chirk Bank and just down from there the Poacher's Pocket. Now those two places are particularly useful for me because not only was it just the fact that you didn't have to keep moving the boats in the rain and the wind and the ice and the snow and the bad weather that comes with winter but also it meant I was only about a five or six mile commute away from where I work in Oswald Street. Then on top of that the sort of almost one of the most important elements of that was the fact that my friends who some of my best friends of all time lived only a few minutes away from the canal in that area so it meant obviously I got to spend a lot of time with them and it made things a lot easier being able to nip up to their house and if I had my bike with me or something I didn't want to leave it on the boat if I was going out for the day I could hop up to their house leave my bike there and then go off and really it was the absolute ideal scenario. So in the end I spent three months moored up at Chirk Bank and paid for those three months and everything was fine I was more than happy with that lovely stuff. Fast forward to the following year, which was the winter from 2013 into 2014, and suddenly that list of places that you could moor up had been slashed. So places such as the Poacher's Pocket and Chirk Bank were no longer listed there, which would have been a problem had it not been for the introduction of the general towpath permit and the general towpath permit is what I think is one of the best things that's been introduced since I've had a boat and been on the canals and basically it acted in the same way as the general like, as the winter moor in places where you could pay a fee and then not have to move but the general towpath permit basically said that you could moor up on any stretch of the canal towpath for however long your license lasted, as long as it met certain rules. So say for example you were in a certain distance from a marina or permanent moorings, that sort of thing. Although there were certain restrictions attached to the general towpath permit, it was excellent because it meant, for me at least, that I could moor up in those areas such as Chirk Bank and the Poacher's Pocket without worrying because those were fine under the rules of the general towpath permit. So I spent a full five months and paid for a full five months on a general towpath permit and I spent most of my time just round the corner from the poacher's pocket and then moving down to 
the new Martin locks for a week or two and then moving back up to the poachers. Um, it was great. And with it not being set to a fixed place, it meant that if I decided after a month or for any reason I wanted to move away, instead of having paid for five months and only getting a month's use out of it, you could move to another area and then spend the rest of your four months there if that place also was within the rules of the licence. So that was absolutely fantastic and I spent and paid for a full five months. The following winter was pretty much the same setup. So again, I had a full five month winter mooring on the general towpath permit on the 2014 into 2015 winter. And again, it did exactly the same. It was great. It was almost an identical year in many respects. So absolutely no problem there and I would say that was even better than what the rules were or at least in my case I thought that that was even better than what the rules had been previous to that back in the first winter of 2012 to 2013 although obviously with that reduced list of mooring places it meant that the general towpath firm it was absolutely vital to my winter so let's fast forward to our current moment in time and talk about the winter that's just passing now, the 2015 into 2016 winter. So basically the winter mooring period has been cut by a month so it now only lasts from the start of November through to the end of February and March is no longer included which is quite interesting and caused a lot of debate and March, it should be pointed out, is the month that in that first winter with all that snowy footage that I like to use was the month that held the biggest, heaviest snowfall that I've ever seen in my life. Um, so if we move on from that, so that's only four months now on winter mooring, then there's no longer a general towpath permit. Perhaps that'll be brought back in the future. Who knows? Check out their website, the Canal and River Trust website, for obviously the up-to-date rules. As If you're watching this down in the future, then who knows what the rules might have changed to. But basically, because there's no general towpath permit, and we're working on this really heavily reduced list of mooring places compared to what the list was when I first bought Tilly, that means that the closest places to Chirk Bank and the Poacher's Pocket that I could pay to moor up at over the winter are Langoflin or Ellesmere. And unfortunately, they're just way too far away for mooring up for four months continuously over the weather, well, the months that contain the worst weather of the year, in theory. So that's the unfortunate reality that basically I just haven't been able to have one it's like I commute from places like Ellesmere and further afield much further afield but that's only passing things and that's not being well, in the worst weather months of the year basically especially with the potential of ice and stuff like that it fell off me bike only a few months ago uh, like, actually like two months ago with that in the ice so obviously minimising the amount of time that you spend actually cycling and out on the roads and that in the pitch black of the morning and after work and all the rest of it um, that's obviously a very important part of why I liked being somewhere that I could go down pretty sensible main roads but very quiet roads because they only link rural places up at the poacher's pocket and so on um, and then on top of that and this is the well this is one of the most interesting uh, things filled with the most debate if I say that for a full five months winter mooring in 2014 to 2012, it cost me £212 for all of that five month period, as Tilly's only a small boat and these are based on a per metre basis that's a lot cheaper than some boats would pay, I should point out. Whereas if I wanted to moor up this year and this winter for only four months, so for one month less than the £212 last year would have cost, for four months this year it would have cost me £486 to stop at Ellesmere or Langoflin. So again, you can see why that doesn't really encourage me to go, well, I am going to go out of my way and make my life more difficult and what have you to do that as, well, Again, £212 for five months in 2014 to 2015, £486 for four months at the nearest places to where I spent my previous winters in 2015 to 16. As an extra statistic, if the winter mooring period lasted for the full five months this year, then, as I say, £212 for five months in last winter, this winter, to stop at Ellesmere or Langoflin, that 
same five months would have cost me £607.05, and pence, so almost three times the price. So again, I hope that that can help to illustrate to, and answer the question as to why I have not had a winter mooring this year. And it's an interesting thing, really, because there's a lot of people, I spoke to multiple people like myself, who are happy and willing to pay up to a certain level, it should be said, um, for a winter mooring. And I have done literally over the last three, well, my first three winters afloat, I literally paid for the full five months out of two of those winters and then three out of five months for winter mooring on the other winter. So out of a possible 15 months of payments that I could have given them, I gave the, the Canal and River Trust 13 of those months. So again, now I just don't have the option. I don't have the realistic option to do that. And again, it's interesting because there's so much to be said about this and what's the aim, what's the intention that we won't get into. And there's a lot of conspiracy theories, as you can imagine, as well. And I don't know. It's just I think it's a real shame because it's something that's genuinely had a massive negative impact on my boat life and really limited the amount of time that I've been able to spend on Tilly compared to previous um, times. Because obviously, if I'm taking Tilly out miles and miles away, then if it comes up to time before and after work, then I've got to go in and stop at my friend's house or stop at my mum's house because there's no way I can realistically cycle like X amount of miles in before work. Again, regardless of the fact that this has been one of the worst weather winters that we've had. We've, if you've been watching my videos, then you'll have seen just the sheer amount of rain that's come out of the sky, unprecedented flooding in the UK and all the rest of it. But ultimately, this is typically the first year that I haven't been able to have a winter mooring, which has meant that I've been out going down all of these really bad towpaths and all the mud and just all of the badness that comes with the bad winter weather I've had to deal with in practically, well, not the most ideal of situations. We'll say that. We'll wrap it up there. Hey, thank you so much for tuning in. Hope that this has been interesting and provided you with a little bit of the background information of what all this hoo-ha is about and what these winter mooring rules are. Feel free to check out my other videos for literally hundreds of boat life videos on this channel. Feel free to subscribe and all that stuff and check out my short boat life books for the Kindle if you're really interested, as that really does help me out in these modern times. Um, but ultimately, have an absolutely fantastic day. Thanks for tuning in. Keep it boat worthy. And of course, farewell.